Hi, I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to another one of our history tutorials. In this particular tutorial, we're going to be talking about sizing. Sizing is preventing the penetration of liquids into the surface of a sheet. Now in an earlier video, we talked about the Chinese first attempt at sizing. They actually use rice water. So they boiled rice to death and then the cloudy water, they dipped a brush into it, used it to paint the surface of the sheet of paper and then re-dried that sheet of paper. So that was the very first attempt at sizing. And the reason for doing sizing is to overcome this sort of effect. We call this feathering. This has been, this piece of paper has been written on with the uh, proper ink, not a ballpoint pen as many people use these days, but proper ink. And as you can see, we do not get nice crisp edges to the letters. And that's because the ink sometimes flows along the surface of a fibre. So you don't get these crisp edges and we call that feathering, the ink feathers out. And so the original idea of sizing was to try and eliminate this problem. Of course, when paper making came into Europe, we didn't grow rice, so we couldn't use that technique, even though it wasn't very good. So we looked around for an alternative. And uh, in 1337, we discovered gelatin, or gelatin does exactly the same. So gelatin you can get from a variety of sources, usually animal sources. The most common sources are cows and pigs, as you can see here, either from the skin or from the bones. Other animals could be used as well. And of course, nowadays there is uh, vegetarian gelatin. But uh, in those days, there was only animal gelatin. Now, gelatin, as you know, if you've ever eaten a jelly, it's a bit sort of soft and, uh, and wobbly. So for a while, uh, they did put in some alum, aluminium sulfate, uh, to make a, a gelatin alum system. And that was okay. Uh, it hardened the gelatin and did the job that it wanted to. And of course, the way that gelatin was processed was um, you would make a whole lot of sheets of paper, dry them all one by one, stack them all, and then here you would have a tub of gelatin water and you would pick up a stack of papers and dip it into this tub of gelatin water to get it all nice and soaked, pull them out, put them under this press, squeeze out all that excess gelatin water and then peel the papers apart one by one and re-dry them. So because the gelatin was applied in a tub, this was known as tub sizing. Later on, they found that you could add sizing agents to the beta engine. So that then name became known as engine sizing. And then as time progressed, they discovered that sizing agents, more modern sizing agents, could be added anywhere along the wet end of a paper machine. You could even put it directly into the, the floor box or the head box. And that type of sizing was then called wet end sizing because it could be put anywhere in the wet end. So as I said, early in the 1500s, they learned about uh, gelatin alum sizing to harden that gelatin. And then the next step in sizing production was um, Illig. In 1807, he developed so-called rosin alum sizing. So rosin is the material that you extract from the tree, and then you combine that with uh, alum or aluminium sulfate. And for about 150 years, rosin alum sizing really dominated the whole of the paper industry. But even though it was so successful, it did have one big problem. This is aluminium sulfate, and you know it's an acid, and it was really too acidic. If you rosin alum sized paper, it's okay for a few years, but as the years go by, the acidity of the alum is slowly 
attacking all the cellulose. And if you get a book that's old enough, you lift up the front cover and all the pages would just disintegrate into dust. So paper sized with rosin alum didn't have a particularly long lifetime. Also, uh, people had learned to put fillers in the paper. Fibres were quite expensive. Fillers like chalk and clay were, were a lot cheaper. So they wanted to put fillers in the paper to make it smoother, to make it opaque, to make it better receptive for ink. But because of the alum, because of the acidity of the alum, they couldn't use chalk, they could not use calcium carbonate. Acids plus carbonates give salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. So you'd end up with very frothy paper if you weren't careful. So they were restricted to only using clay as a filler. So aluminium sulfate had these two problems. The acidity attacked the cellulose, so the fibre didn't, the, the paper, the sheet didn't have a particularly long lifespan, and it prohibited people from using chalk. And everybody wanted to use chalk because chalk was cheaper than clay and it was also brighter. And both clay and chalk are brighter than fibres. So people hunted and eventually in the 1960s a company called Hercules uh, invented what we call a neutral sizing system and this particular chemical was an organic material AKD, everyone called it AKD, alkyl ketene dimer is its chemical name and that then really started to replace the vast majority of the rosin alum systems. It wasn't acidic at all, so that means instantly everybody could stop using clay and start using chalk. That made the paper brighter and it made the, uh, the furnish cheaper because chalk was cheaper than clay. And it gave the paper a much long, prolonged lifespan. It could last more than 100 years now because the alkalinity of the chalk would even offset any of the um, acidic gases that were around in those early days. When people had coal fires, there was lots of sulfur dioxide in the air, very small quantities that would dissolve in the moisture of the paper, form sulfuric acid and damage the sheet. There's one small problem with, with AKD, and that is when it hydrolyzes, when it reacts with water, some of the AKD will react with the cellulose and go where you want it to be to form a sizing agent. Some of the AKD will react with the process water. When it does that, it forms very, very tiny little waxy particles. And those waxy particles make the paper very, very slippery. So if you have a pallet with a big stack of AKD sized sheets, you only have to look at it hard and the whole thing will fall over. Or you open the door and a draft comes, everything slides, boom, gone. And people have looked for an alternative. And another alternative to uh, rosin alum is ASA, alkenyl succinic anhydride. Structurally, very, very similar to AKD. Reaction mechanism, very similar to AKD, but when it hydrolyzes in water, it does not form the same type of waxy material, and so you don't get the same slippery type of surface. Well, that's all I want to say about uh, sizing for the moment. Again, we'll talk about it in more detail when we're on the uh, chemical additives videos. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for listening. We hope you've enjoyed it. And we look forward to seeing you uh, giving us some feedback. Thank you for your attention.